Grand Seiko, a name that's been buzzing around in the watch community a lot more in the past few years. Recognition well deserved, but also bittersweet, as some of the prior owners of these watches almost seem to treat them like an insider secret. Incredible value for their quality and ingenuity, but the cat is out of the bag, and some of these watches have become the hottest new grail watches for many. Most watch collectors own or have owned a Seiko watch. They are akin to Toyota in my opinion. Built well, affordable, and with incredible reliability, but still leaving some things to be desired. Grand Seiko is much more like Lexus. More expensive, but still a great value in comparison to others in the same or similar class. Unrivaled reliability, higher quality materials and features, but somewhat more conservative in their design and willingness to go outside the box. A quick glance down the Grand Seiko products page will show you many of their watches have similar looks. Many, but not all. There is something for everyone. And perhaps you have one of these listed on your Grail watch list. But maybe that day is a bit further down in the future. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you a review of this Rokos R0101, which may scratch that itch for your desire of the look of a classic Grand Seiko. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, my name's Dave. May the Schwartz be with you. To my returning Schwartz Force, welcome back. Let's first start with the measurements of this watch. The case diameter is 38 millimeters. It comes in just under 42 millimeters with the crown. Lug to lug height is 47 and a half millimeters. And case thickness with this dome sapphire crystal is 13 millimeters. The case is 316L stainless steel, which has been plated with 18 karat yellow gold. This version of the R0101 that I have is on this brown leather strap with the crocodile embossed pattern. The strap width is 20 millimeters at the lug and tapers down to 18 millimeters. So it does have that vintage feel and look. The watch also came with this double deployant butterfly clasp that is also stainless steel and has been plated in gold. It does come with quick release spring bars, which are always a welcome feature in my book. Moving to the face of the watch, we do have a dome sapphire crystal, which has a very nice and striking beveled edge that allows for this nice elegant look and plays with how the light and the shadows hit the dial. The dial color is a pearlescent white. It looks much better in person than what is shown here on camera. There are applied baton hour markers and simple stick minute markers. I do like how there are double baton markers at 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions. The 12 o'clock marker is actually the Rokos Lion logo. I happen to like this a lot because my birthday is in August, so it reminds me of the Leo in me when I see it. I also like the king's crown that is worn by the lion. It just looks very cool to me. Rokos branding is located just under that in gold with the establishment date printed under. A simple automatic is also printed down near six o'clock. The watch has these gold dauphine shaped minute and hour hands with a very elegant leaf shaped second hand. Day date window is located at three o'clock and I appreciate that they didn't line it all the way up against the edge. The date window box is lined in gold and looks very nice. Day and date font is clear. It is a good size considering the case diameter of 38 millimeters. Now moving to the side of the watch, we have lugs that protrude slightly, giving some depth and dimension to the case. The crown features a simple letter R and has a coin edge that feels nice when being used to manually wind the movement or adjust the date. It is not a screw down crown. We only get 30 meters of water resistance on this dress watch. The watch does hack when the crown is moved in position two. When adjusting the time is perfect in regards to feel. It's not too fast, but slow enough to get a precise positioning on the minute hand. The date change begins around 11 p.m. and clicks over at 12.05 a.m. The day change starts at 12.20 a.m. It's completed around 3.20 a.m. Adjusting the day date is easy, but please do not initiate manual adjustment between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. Position one, turning the crown towards you counterclockwise will change the date. It feels nice and it clicks over quickly. Turning the crown away from you or clockwise will change the day of week. It does cycle between English and Chinese. There is an exhibition case back with a nicely detailed and decorated seagull movement that has gold plated features and blued screws. It's nicely done. Wording around the case back is listing the brand, model, and indications of sapphire crystal and 30 meters of water resistance. On the time graph, we're showing that this movement is beating along 21,600 vibrations per hour. It bounced around quite a bit, so I would say that this is getting approximately plus or minus 10 seconds per day on average. Okay, let's summarize and talk price. What I like about this watch is the classic and vintage look of a Grand Seiko. 
All the detail work is done nicely, comes with sapphire crystal, decent automatic movement, and a double deployment clasp. What I wish were better would be a screw down crown and higher water resistance. Other than that, I think this is a solid option for the price. I got this watch on Amazon for $90. While there are plenty of other options of dress watches under $100, this one just stood out to me so I snagged it and I really do like the look, feel, and size of it. Let me know what you think and what recommendations you may have for me and down in the comments. As always, thanks for checking out my video. If you haven't joined the Schwartz Force yet, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell and be sure to like, comment, and share, and I'll see you at the next one. May the Schwartz be with you. Take care.